But anyway, I think uh, you've been talking, especially uh, with regards to some of these matters. I'll give you a quote of what you said concerning uh, the 2015, uh, we'll, uh, everyone has been talking about. You, you quote, you said, as far as I am concerned, there should be no two ways about it. People who made promises must be made to abide by such promises. Uh, that was uh, in the vanguard of uh, a Sunday. What promise uh, are you talking about and to whom was uh, such a promise made? I'm I have, I have been referring to processes, um, the promises made and not kept, particularly by uh, the PDP as a party, which is the governing party and which is also the current president's party. They have made so many pr promises, some were informal, but even when not only they made the promises and they were written promises, they also decided in the process of uh, you know b reneging on those promises. They decided to, um, as it were, um, not disrespect provisions of their own constitution. So if a man or a party or a group are prepared to disrespect the very foundation which brings them together and makes them function as a group or as a political uh, elite, then uh, nobody should be surprised if indeed they decide to violate or deny on promises they made which are formal or informal. In the instant case, there are documents which I cited and they date from 2010 when in fact there was a meeting at Wadata House to the best of my knowledge the Wadata House was and still the national headquarters of the PDP and one of the discussions uh, that took place was also captured in the communique and the current governor of Kazina State was the one who actually gave an insight an inkling into how the governors uh, what the governors discussed and what was arrived at and also indicated that uh, there had been signed agreements. Uh, the agreement provided that uh, good luck should serve only one term. It was, un I mean, it was unequivocal. Secondly, the agreement also provided that uh, that, uh, that, that that particular agreement should be binding on all those who are present. And there are, in my understanding, I think between 24 to 26 PDP governors. And the PDP governors all signed, I think 24 signed as governors, and two were deputy governors who also signed on their respective states and their respective state chapters. So as far as I'm concerned, that remains binding on the president, and I'm assuming the president is a gentleman. Well, and I hope Dr. that Marvin, next time we make yeah. these kind of promises, people will, uh, will respect those promises. And if they don't want to respect those promises, it's up to Nigerians, if they're given the opportunity, to decide what to do with people who do not respect their promises. Well, uh, Dr. Mohamed, I'm so excited uh, you saying that uh, you stumbled on uh, such documents. You know, this is just not the first time Nigerians have been told about some documents being signed about any kind of agreement. And at the end of the day, uh, the nation never gets to see such documents. Uh, perhaps if you have such document, would you be willing to let us or let the people see such documents and see signatures and those who signed such papers? Good question, Mr. Alade. A, a, a very good co question. The fact of the matter is, democracy is not only for the party in power or the individuals or group of individuals, elites who are in power. Democracy is supposed to be transparent. Democracy is supposed to be also a matter not only for the governing party, but a matter for all Nigerians. Now, I am not a member of the PDP. I will never be a member of the PDP. But what I know is that what decisions that are being taken, what promises which are being made, uh, accepted or denied uh, by the PDP affect all Nigerians irrespective of, irrespective of their political inclinations. I'm persuaded that such an agreement exists. I've been told by people whose judgment I respect, whose integrity I respect, that there is such an agreement. But in previous agreements which also were written, nobody in the PDP had the courage to come out and show this is the agreement. Because the PDP, from the time it was formed by generals to date, has never been run as a transparent organization. It has always been run like a cult. Now, if a member of the cult lacks the courage to come out and spill the beans and uh, blow whistle and say, look, this is what we agreed, uh, reneging on the agreement was improper and so on and so forth, it is not for me to either defend or confirm. But I know from people who have known for 40, 50 years 
that this indeed exists. And other agreements they had also existed. And, and, and let me say this, let me say this, please. It is important for people to realize that in, 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 in other instances, when they violated their own constitution, the PDP constitution, went ahead and did what they did. They had the, uh, you know, the, 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 the constitution. Now, if people are prepared to deny the existence of what is clearly written and is, a public, uh, is in public domain, you cannot blame me for saying, why is nobody bringing out the, the papers? Are those who are in the PDP and also are those who are responsible for the culture of, uh, of, 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 of hypocrisy and double talk and, 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 and the way they have been running their own party? It is not my business and I have never, you know, one of the reasons I never joined them because I don't believe they are dem Democrats. It was first formed by generals and generals are playing a very important role in the party. Uh, they use money from the treasury to finance the party, and that I can give you evidence because I mean it's within me. Now, if they are doing what they are doing, you don't ask, you don't expect me to come and say, well, I mean these are the papers, these are the people who are present, and so on and so forth. Some right. of the big noise makers who are in the PDP and gave the impression of pretending that they were in opposition failed to come out and convince Nigerians that this is the agreement and this is why it exists. And I remember, I remember people who were in. in in contention as other presidential candidates or whatever have failed to come forward and say this is the agreement even though they had copies of it well dr mohammed i mean is this related to what the niger state governor spoke about because he made reference to something similar to this one of an agreement existing somewhere he's a member of pdp but the pdp denied it saying look they don't know what he's talking about are they connected in any way Mr. Also, you have to be very careful in defining what the PDP is because not every statement from the presidency by some of the attack dogs uh, in the presidency actually was being made in the name of the PDP as a party. No, this one as is by Ahmed Gula, the, the special is, advisor to the president on political matters. He is not the special advisor to either the chairman or to the PDP, right? And as far as I'm concerned, uh, uh, something of this magnitude ought to have been cleared by a more senior person who is close enough to the president and who has credibility. Uh, like the young man you're talking about, I don't know him. I know he's a special assistant and then given the nature of, of the PDP and his governance and the presidential system they run, they can have hundreds of uh, special assistants with all sorts of bogus names. But this is something the PDP is a party itself at the highest possible level should clarify. Or in the, in the alternative, the presidency particularly people who are senior enough at the level of special advisors and not some kind of jokers who are, who are nothing but attack dogs who are on hire. And if tomorrow uh, good luck sees to be president, they find somebody to, to do this kind of thing, they will do it for him. Dr. Dorian Okupi, my friend, he used to do this kind of job for Obasanjo. And Obasanjo unceremoniously sacked him. Now he's part of the Gulak uh, uh, Dorian Okupi group doing the same job. And, uh, you know, shame is not something, is not a very important component of spokesperson for the PDP or for, for the presidency. The president has told us that he was going to, uh, for example, rejig and reshuffle the cabinet. It's getting two years now, we have seen nothing. It's because, because there are people who are too powerful and too close to the president, especially two, uh, two, two, two female ministers who feel they're too important to be posted out of their stations. We now have a situation whereby there is need for a cabinet reshuffle. Some ministers are not performing, and this, this is what uh, reshuffles are for. If they are not prepared to reshuffle a cabinet, when they don't need anybody's advice and they don't need sanction or advice from the National Assembly, you can see how a, a relatively more important issue uh, more, with greater gravitas is being thoroughly mishandled. 